Hello! For today's video, we're doing something that I thought was interesting. You guys have been commenting a bunch, asking me to customize game boards, or like a chess board, or some kind of game board, and that got me thinking, there are a lot of really fun game boards that I could customize. So, the first one I want to do is tic-tac-toe. I stumbled upon this wooden game board on Amazon. It's a box. And inside the box, you have some directions that we don't need. And wooden tic-tac-toe pieces. Typically, tic-tac-toe is just played on a piece of paper. But you know what? I saw this and I thought this would be really fun to have on a coffee table and guests can just play it when they come over. The wood is really nice. It actually smells very good, like firewood. Take a whiff, it smells delicious. Because I enjoy customizing things, we are going to be painting this. This is a paint palette that has a glob of tangerine paint crusted onto it. Ignore that. We're gonna start off with some white because we are painting a nice white base coat on this beautiful wood. Look how smooth that goes on. Oh my gosh. Paint is just my favorite. The first thing I'm covering in white paint is this box which stores all of the tic-tac-toe objects. And then of course we have the actual tic-tac-toe game board. There are little lines on this because it's tic-tac-toe, but they're crevices and you have to really dig your paintbrush into it to actually get the paint between the lines. And after I'm done painting the game board itself, there are the pieces. In tic-tac-toe, you can either be an O, which is slightly more annoying to paint because there is a center inside the O and you gotta get your paintbrush inside the little crevice. Your fingers get paint all over them, no way around that. Or you could be an X. The X's are equally annoying to paint in a different way because they just have so many tiny surfaces. And now at last, we are ready. We're all prepped and prepared to paint our <laughs> game board with some colors. I've mixed together a lot of pink and a small amount of purple and a blue-green color. I'm starting off by painting the container, the box for the tic-tac-toe game with the light pink color. My goal for this was to just paint all of my base colors down first before I added any extra fun details. On the box itself, you will be able to see the edges when you insert the game board. Because you'll be able to see those edges when you're playing the game, I decided to paint two edges with the light purple color and two edges with the teal. I guess you could call this a teal color. Maybe it's an aquamarine. I don't know. A turquoise? I think it's turquoise. We're gonna go with turquoise. Or if you're like fancy seafood, we could call it turquoise. Mm, ah, yes. A nice shade of turquoise you have right there. On the sides of the box, I decided to paint the same light pink color, and I was very careful not to get it on the colors that I had just painted on the edges. And honestly, very surprisingly, I made no mistakes. It's shocking. Flipping that over, the bottom of the box is not really going to be seen that much, so I just painted that with the light pink color yet again. Now that I'm done with the base colors for the box, it's time to move on to the game board itself. This is the tic-tac-toe part of the board. The lines are little crevices or indentations that are really hard to get paint into. But I did want these to be different colors than the squares themselves. So I took the time to get the paint into the little crevices with the turquoise color and the lavender purple color. As I did this, I did make quite a mess, but do not fear because I actually dipped into the light pink color and then went back and individually painted each of the squares on this tic-tac-toe board. This process of painting the individual squares was actually a pretty painstaking process because I was a little concerned I was gonna get light pink into the lines and then have to go back and mess everything up. Because of this minor concern, I did take my time, I went slow, and painted each little square very precisely, until finally we had the full top of the game board complete. But now we have to paint the edges, which was not that hard. I did make sure to avoid the two little lines on each of the sides so that we weren't getting pink in there, but other than that, it wasn't too complicated to paint. And then I also painted the bottom of the game board with, you guessed it, the light pink color. I was in a very pink mood that day. <laughs> For the X's, we're painting those with the light purple lavender color. These pieces are pretty small to paint, so I did get purple all over my fingertips, but you know what, that's okay. 
Once the purple was done, I moved on to my O's. For the O's, I decided to paint them with the turquoise color. If you haven't caught on yet, we are doing purple versus turquoise, an age-old rivalry. Purple and turquoise, they face off, they hate each other. It's, what, you've never heard of this? It's a real thing, okay? And now we're ready for some details. On the inside of the box, I decided to draw a butterfly. Gross. If you've been following my channel for a while, most people are aware that I am somewhat terrified of butterflies. I don't like them. I find them very scary. In particular, their wings in person are disgusting to me and I can't handle it. I run away. However, in cartoon form or in painting form, I actually really like butterflies. I think they're really pretty when you draw them. They're fun to draw, they're fun to paint, and I wish I could embrace them in person. Unfortunately, they're disgusting to me in person. It's sad, but it is true. So I guess you could say in today's painting, I am facing my fears. Today we look darkness directly in the eye and say, no more. After I had finished painting the base color for the butterfly with the purple, I took out my turquoise or turquoise. I got I got to stop saying that. I'm sorry. Anyway, I used this color for some details. On the bottom part of the butterfly in particular, I did a cool outline with the turquoise color. You'll notice that my hand looks like it's thinking very hard. No, you can't really notice that a hand is thinking very hard, but I was thinking very hard as I was painting these details. I was going very slowly and trying to paint things very exactly. And that is because I had used up all of my light pink paint. And I did not want to make a mistake because I didn't want to have to remix my pink and risk things not matching exactly. I hate wasting paint. Ooh, come to think of it, that should probably be my pet peeve for my Draw Your Journal pet peeve page. I've been trying to think of what I should put in the pet peeve page. And it should definitely be wasting paint. I have like a, a mental block where if I mix together more paint than I need and then waste it, especially if it's a color like pink, because pink there's only a limited amount of colors that I have on me that I can mix together to create this color pink. And then I feel like I've wasted all the paint. It's a real terrible time for me. It's very stressful for me. I don't know why I do it to myself. I really should just buy more paint. Anyway, because I don't like to waste any paint, I try to paint very precisely and not make any mistakes at all. Trying to paint everything perfectly at all times makes things so much more stressful than they have to be, and I really try not to do that, but it is something that I have to constantly be like, no, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's like a constant battle for me. I love the way this butterfly came out. Let's move on to the sides of the box. So for the sides of the box, you can't see anything because my hand is in the way. All right, here we go. You can see that I'm painting little cubes. At first I debated painting drips on the side of the box, but because the box is square and the tic-tac-toe game board also has a bunch of squares, I thought it would be more interesting to create square drips down the side of the box. It weirdly reminds me of of technology or some kind of music notes playing. I also really like that it mimics all the squares that are found on the game board. And I think in this case, it's actually more interesting than doing regular drips. The game box is just about done. I'm just adding my B signature, B for Bella, on the side of the box. And now we're gonna move on to the X's. I wanted to add some extra color to the X's without doing something that was too crazy or too overwhelming. So I decided to just add those same squares to the X's to kind of bring things together. <laughs> For the O's, I'm using the purple color. Initially, I was gonna do polka dots on it, but then I decided to do confetti or little Tic Tacs. Oh my gosh, that would have been such a fun theme if I did Tic Tacs for Tic Tac Toe. Oh my gosh, missed opportunities. Someone else should do it. Once all the game pieces were done, I took them outside and sprayed them with a Mod Podge gloss. You can't see me, but behind the camera, I'm actually wearing some goggles. Goggles really shouldn't be necessary to wear, but I got this spray in my left eye one time and I'm scarred from the experience. It will not happen again. And here we have the final result of the game board. You can see that we have the game board, all the pieces are inside. You can open it up, take it out, and play the game. We have my squishies here playing a very rousing game of tic-tac-toe. Who will win? Wow. Crushing defeat. 
I know that some people might like the wooden version of this better, but I love the way that this turned out. I love the pink, I love the butterflies, I love the turquoise and the purple. I had a really fun time painting this and I really like the way it came out. If you want to see more painting videos, I have a playlist linked in one of these two boxes. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week for another video. Bye!